The angels of God are the sons of God appear before God to give an account to their what? Assignment. Then it says, and then the devil, or Lucifer, or came also, or Satan came also to give an account. Anybody know that? So that means that the devil had a what? An assignment. Y'all ain't talking to me. Yeah, yeah. So if he got an assignment, then guess what he's doing? He's doing what God has signed him to do. That's why. Uh, church folk can't handle that. Church folks can't handle that. Because preachers are afraid to give you the truth and continue to think that we are not supposed to suffer and go through things. But every prophet that I ever studied and searched out went through rejection, went through heartache, went through pain. Was beaten, was destroyed. Some was even killed because they love God. I'm here to tell you that the thing that you're going through is designed by God to develop you into His image and in His likeness and what He wants. You mean tell me I'm not in the image of God? No, you're not. You're in the image of Adam. Right. Yeah. Go to the book of Genesis. I think it's chapter 5. And it reads this way. Adam was made in the image and likeness of God. Right. And then it said, Seth was made in the image and likeness of Adam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm made in the image and likeness of God. No, you're not. You're made in the image and likeness of Adam. That's why you got to be born again. If we had never been made, if we had been made in the image and likeness of God, then we wouldn't need born to be reborn. Repeat after me, please. What if? What if? So, our subject this morning is have faith in God. Amen. Amen. Paul says in Romans that faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. The preached word of God. The word of God must be understood in order for you to trust God. Yeah. Trust comes after your faith in God. Mm -hmm. That's right. You can never trust until you have faith first. Amen. Trust means security, rest, confidence. Faith is believing without actually seeing. Faith comes because you heard and then you believe and acted or conducted yourself to what you heard. You guys don't even realize but you practice faith every day. You get up in the morning. You start getting yourself ready to go to work or to go to school. That's faith. You get in your car, you get on the school bus, and you're heading to a place that you're believing that you're going to work or to school. When you arrive, that's faith. In its most simplest form, and yet we miss it. Watch this. You have a desire in your heart to do something or to become a person. And you start doing things according to what you want to be, your desire. That's faith. And when you arrive to that place and become to that place, 
place of success. Then you're praising God. You're giving God thanks for the strength and for helping you to get there. And not realize that you have practiced faith. Am I right about it? Yes. But when it comes to God, you take on a whole new... That's right. Yes. That's right. You do stuff totally different. Because you separate the world from God. And that's where church folks go wrong and miss God. Because God is still involved. He has not lost control of anything.
feel like old school this morning. Yeah. This is good. This is good. <laughs> and somebody got a white ring for me.
I take him down and put him up. No man. He says, I, he said, told him, he told the prophet, he says, the king's heart is in my hand. The king's heart. A godless heart is in God's hand. Every president that ever comes up, every man or woman that ever comes to a high position to rule and govern on the hearts of men, God puts them there and God has their heart. They're going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't care how much you come against them and how much it says God, what God has said is going to come to pass. God, the only time God will send an angel is when you need more faith. The only time God will perform, perform a miracle is when you don't believe. But when you don't believe, when you believe, God doesn't need to perform a miracle. Nor send an angel. Why? Because he gave you the power to do it. This is what we don't understand about our sins. Oh, we say, oh, here we go. After that, after that the Holy Spirit will come upon you, we shall have power. <laughs> and then the next question you should ask yourself is power to do what? Right. <laughs> and you just get stuck in this area. They cast out devils, they heal all now, sickness and disease, and, and do all that. And that's all you do. Speak in tongues, dance, <clears throat> and have church. But then in your everyday life, God is not there. In your daily walk with God. God sent it to Moses. So God has spoken this to Abraham. And he says, I got to bring to prayer. Notice the word King James. He said, which I swear unto Abraham. And that word swear is referring to the covenant that God went into with Abraham. Yes. 17th chapter of St. John, on 17th chapter of Genesis, God caused Abraham to go into a deep sleep. Mm -hmm. And the scripture says, and God came down in the form of a pillar of fire yes, yes. and walked between the dead animals. Mm -hmm. And then taken, the scripture says, and he took an oath to himself mm -hmm. and says, if I don't bring to pass everything that I have promised you, Abraham, he said, then let me die the death. The writer of Hebrews said that God, seeing that there was nobody greater than himself, he took an oath to himself. And this is the promise. Abraham, if I don't bring to pass what I promised you, then I'm going to kill myself. Because there's nobody else who can kill God. So God said, I'm going to commit suicide. So the scripture says out of the mouth of the prophet that God has set watchers over his word. Yeah. That not one jot, one tittle of his word should ever fail. And watchers are angels. And angels carry out whatever God says. So when the word of the Lord comes out of God's mouth, angels follow that word to perform it. That's Everybody right. sitting in this room got two angels. Yes, yes. That's a sign to you. Yes. And everything that God has broke, or spoken over your life, they are there to carry. Yes. Now listen, every person, not just saved people, right, that's right. unsaved yes, people, right. all people got yes. angels. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Glory. Jesus, glory. And here's the statement that we make. I don't know why these people are so mean. They are so evil. The devil really got them. <laughs> When we go, you're not realizing that they are actually doing. That's why. That's why when I was 15, 16, and 17, and doing the stuff that I was doing, because at 18 was when I was assigned by God to get saved. He couldn't save me at 12. He had allowed me to go through some things. So that when I, when that time came, when I reached 18, May 
1973, on my knees, asking God, doing, saying this prayer. Now I lay me down to sleep with raising on myself. Eighteen years old. That's what I'm praying. And then God, I audible voice speaks. And for the first time, I heard God speak like a man. I heard the voice of God as a man talking to me. And he says, you are a hypocrite and you are not tarry in my sight. And immediately my heart was turned to repentance before God. Yes, mm -hmm. Bring it past what Paul says. No one can repent truly until God gives the spirit, what do you call it? Godly, Godly sorrow comes upon your heart. So nobody turns to God until God gives them godly sorrow. Yeah. That's why Jesus said, no man comes to me except I drop. How do you drop? I first come and give you godly sorrow. Mm -hmm. Now, if I can preach something in church and you are hurt and you get blessed and I say, you wonder who anybody want to join church and you come up and you repent and when you leave, you go right back door and sign those stuff. Why? Because godly sorrow. Mm -hmm. So you'll stop doing what you're doing when godly Sorrow. Take over. Yeah. All right, let me keep going. I got to. Just go and read down to verse 3. I'm not going to stop you anymore. Go ahead. And I will send my angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Persites, the Hebites, and the Jebusites. Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in your midst, lest I consume you on the way. For you are a stiff-necked people. Wow. Now here is where the children of Israel had built the golden calf. Mm -hmm. God is reminding Moses. He said, I want you to tell the children of Israel this. He said, I promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that what I was going to do with you. Mm -hmm. And he says, and you've done this to me. Mm -hmm. You built this golden calf. The promise was, I will go before you, and I will drive out all the inhabitants of the land, and you wouldn't have to fight. He said, I will carry you on eagle's wings. All you got to do is have faith in me. But when they heard God speak out of the mountain, they told Moses, we are God too powerful for us. We are the heroes and don't let God talk to us. So that was immediately when they rejected God. But guess what? God put it in their hearts to reject him because these was not a people that he wanted to You mean to tell me when God got God ready to get you and he came to you and the presence of God came all over you? Didn't you bow? Yes. Didn't you submit? Yes. Because God did it. So why is it these people, when God shows up, they reject God? Because they felt rejection from God. Wow. Come on. You that are married, you can tell when your husband don't want to yes. be bothered with you. You can feel the rejection without them even saying anything. Yes, that's right. They rejected God before God even rejected them. Wow. Why you know that? Because they built the golden calf. Right. They said the golden calf is what delivered us. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what? Go ahead. Do y'all not know the Bible? Yeah. <laughs> so now God is angry. And in, in the beginning, God was in the camp. God was in the middle of them. Mm -hmm. And they surrounded God. But when they did this, God told Moses to move the tent of congregation where he dwelt and take it out from the midst of them and put it behind them. At least I consumed them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. He says, I, I can't destroy them right now because I have to keep the promise that I made to Abraham, mm -hmm. Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody see this? Mm -hmm. Notice, go, now go over to uh, seven, eight songs. I want to start at verse 12, and then I want to go down to verse 22, and I'm almost finished. Here, this is something that I want you to really, really, truly pay attention. Now, how many of you in this room 
have a, t a sickness or uh, ailment in your body. And as we say, we're waiting for God to heal us. Stick your hands up. Alright? And yet, in the midst of your pain, of your, how you feel, you're still pressing your way to come to church. You're still praying. You're still talking to God. You're still going through all this stuff, right? So it hasn't really, really stopped you. But you have those bad days where you can just feel like give it up. But let me ask you a question. Have what you feel and what you're going through, have it changed your God at all? No. No. Not at all. No. But it changed you and your feelings sometimes towards God, have not you? It caused you to start wondering whether or not God is or is where it's true or have I missed it. But one of the things that church have done is caused you to start looking for some sin that you've done. Because this is happening because you've done some sin. That's what they said. Then if you say, well, I ain't got no sin, so somebody must be working roots. <laughs> Could it not be your thorn in the flesh? We don't want to accept that. No, 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 no. If you ever go back and read and study the book of Job, all the stuff that Job went through, the scripture says he did not sin nor lose his trust or hope in God. And none of us have been through anything similar to what Job did. <laughs> Some of us have been going through things for years. What Job went through was only nine months. Wow. <clears throat> and the scripture says he never lost his integrity with God. He maintained integrity. And the word integrity means that he kept God holy. He did not want to curse God. He, he knew that God could do whatever he wanted to do. And the scripture says this. He maintained his integrity with God. And did not charge God for mission. Job never offered a sacrifice for sin that he might have committed that he didn't remember. He didn't go through any of that. The only thing that Job got upset about was that before this happened, him and God was talking. Mm -hmm. This thing happened and God never spoke to him. God never answered when he prayed. When he offered sacrifice, God never spoke. And that was the thing that got Job upset. Because God would not tell him the reason why he was going through what he was going through. Nor did God talk to Job. So Job went nine months without the voice of God ever speaking to him. When he, when he was on a daily basis, him and God talked more than one time a day before this happened. Now this is happening and God shuts up his mouth. And all Job won't know, I go through this if you just tell me why. I gotta go through it. But when God did, look what he said. When in one scripture, I think it's the 38th chapter of Job, he said this. He said, I will, if I knew where God's seat was, mm -hmm. I will fill my mouth with argument. Yes, I will stand before him yes, and I will tell him how I feel. Yes. And then he said, I will step back and I will see how he will answer me. Yes. He said, but when I considered God, I became afraid. <laughs> the only thing was I needed to know what was going on. And we always go, we sometimes
sometimes go through stuff and we've been praying and talking to God and God don't tell you the reason why. Everything, I'm 60 years old and everything that I have been through in life was God's purpose. When I had learned how to accept the hand of God working in my life and that God was all power, then I was able to go through things and not take things personally, yes. Amen. but realize that there was a purpose behind this. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me go ahead and keep reading. I'm ready to get back in working wounded. Yeah. <laughs> Marvelous things he did in the sight of their fathers, in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan. He divided the sea and caused them to pass through. And he made the water stand up like a heap. Let's keep going 14. Okay. In the daytime, he also led them with the clouds. And all night with the light of fire. Okay, let's stop. Now notice what he says in verse 12. He said what? Marvelous things. Marvelous. Mm -hmm. Now, watch this. Marvelous thing that he did in the sight of the fathers in the, in the land of Egypt and in the field of Zoom. He divided the sea. They saw that, right? Wow. 